of French players went one and two with Zachary Richasse and to the Hawks and Alex Saar to the Wizards, making this the first time since 2003 that the top two picks do not have college experience. The Rockets followed those picks by taking Reed Shepard at three. Now the Spurs were busy drafting UConn guard Stefan Castle at number four to pair with Victor Wembanyama. Castle, the highest drafted UConn player in 15 years. Then they traded the eighth pick, Rob Dillingham, to the Wolves for a 2031 first and top one projected 2030 pick swap. The Grizzlies took two-time winning award winner Zach Eady at number nine. The seven foot four Eady is tied for the third tallest top 10 pick in the modern draft era and adds size to a Grizzlies team that ranked last in paint scoring last season, but was the two seed in the West in 2023. And Dalton Connect was projected to go six overall in ESPN's final mock draft, but made it all the way to 17 where the Lakers took the sharpshooter from Tennessee. Connect scored 780 points last season, second most in Tennessee history, trailing only Allen Houston. All right, I'm going to start with you, Perk. Who do you think was the biggest winner in the draft last night? Can I straddle the fence to go winners? That's not a that's not but, an answer, but go for it. I'm, I'm going to go winners. Okay. Right, Minnesota with the kid Rob, you know, best isolation player in college last year. He's a walking bucket. I think, you know, Minnesota needs that. We saw that in the postseason when they were playing against the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, you know, they need – Anthony Edwards needed someone to go get a bucket. Like, no – no knock on Mike Conley or Alexander Walker, but, you know, you need somebody that's a go-getter. So, being there with Anthony Edwards, the mentality that he brings, the hard work that he brings, and this kid just flat out got it. Jamal Crawford said something uh, a few days ago. He said, this kid already is going to have the uh, top 10 handles in the NBA. That's how phenomenal of a talent he is with the ball in his hands. Then I'm going with everybody else, the Lakers. They won, right? Getting the kid uh, Dalton Clink, uh, Connect, Connect yeah. at uh, 17, I thought he could have been easily top 10. Uh, shout out to one of my great friends, Rashard Phillips. He said he reminds him of Dan Marley. You know, the way he's able to get buckets. He's not just a shooter, right? He does a whole lot of other things, and he's a dog. And we need to bring out Aaliyah, uh, uh, uh legs. You remember the song yep. from Aaliyah, AJ number the number? Because I feel like that's why he slipped, because of his age. We make it such a bad quality nowadays that the dude can actually drink champagne legally than when he gets his name called. Like, that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. 23 years old, look, here's I agree with you about Dalton Connect. And here's the thing. I think there's a home run both ways you look at it, for the Lakers and for him. Here's the thing. Lakers needed a guy that they can plug and play. You don't have a lot of time to develop a 19-year-old kid when you've got LeBron James at this stage right. of his career. Mm -hmm. So that's first. We need a guy that can get rotational minutes right now. Dalton Connect can do that. To Perk's point, he improves your shooting overnight. They need that. He's also got bounce. He's athletic. He's tough. He's strong. He can play through contact at the rim. Now, he's going to be a little bit more limited at the NBA level early because of the usage rate of LeBron, AD, and Austin Reeves. He is going to be more of a spot-up guy. If that's the case, who better to learn from than his head coach? J.J. Redick learned how to move without the ball to create extra space for yourself, extra time, angles, shooting, catching the ball off dribble handoffs with a lean to your game. All of those things that Dalton Connect didn't have to do a lot of at Tennessee because he had the ball all the time. Now he's going to be playing off the ball more. Who better learn from a guy that made his career out of doing it? So I loved this pick when I saw that draft room, Zach right before the pick, and they hadn't said who yet. They just said the pick is in, and they showed their draft room, and they were running around, and, and I thought J.J. was going to dance up on the table. I knew right then they got they were going for Dalton Connect because that's exactly the kind of guy that J.J. Redick knew he could make use out of. Well, look, 23 ain't so old when the leader of your team is 40. Like, he's, he's, right. he's young for the Lakers. He's for, and J.J., settle down with the whiteboard, okay? Because, like they said, he's he already drawing up plays yeah, yeah. on the whiteboard. Right. I'm calling BS on that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. like telling me to back away from the dinner table set. Yep. That ain't happening. I'm, That's why we're hey, sitting I'm here right now. I'm coming down on the BS comment. <laughs> I saw it. I saw that. I said, come on. Settle, man. Settle up. But no, here's what you're saying. We're talking, about, we're talking about what a great fit yep. Dalton Connect is mm -hmm. under Lakers. Plug and play and all this. Before the draft, every Lakers discussion was, well, you know, they're going to have three first-round picks to trade in the offseason for like a mm -hmm. big offseason upgrade for a big star talent. LeBron and AD want to win now. Well, one of those picks is now Dalton Connect. And we're sitting here talking about what a great fit he is with the Lakers, how we great, how he's ready to play right now for this team. What does that do to their trade kind of conversations? Is he, are they less willing to put that pick in play? What does that do for the kind of players they can get involved in chasing in the offseason? What I, it, it's this this pick that was 
in the trade machine left and right is now a human player that the Lakers seem really excited about. It's a very interesting little plot twist. Uh, I do want to ask you, uh, because you watch a lot of Connect this college yeah. basketball season at Tennessee, he was projected to go higher. Yep. He dropped to yep. 17. What do you think the reason for that could possibly be? I think strictly because teams, are, there's a lot of uh, lack of consensus with this draft of who's who up and down the board like you you will never see guys vary when you look at different mock drafts of where they could go so as a result they were focused on that age component I really do believe that was the biggest factor that this isn't a guy that you say okay two years from now he's going to be exponentially better because he's a young long wing and he's 19 years old and we could just teach him how to play and hey maybe maybe the guy will be 6 11 in two years he didn't have that kind of upside to him. What he does have is a guy that's going to have a very long, successful NBA career, mm -hmm. particularly because of his skill set. Like that, that translates to the NBA right now, and it's always going to translate. And I also just love he's got an edge to him because he was a target every night against that level competition, and he loved it. He don't mind talking a little bit. <laughs> he gets after it. He brings on the challengers. That's a guy that's going to succeed. I also love what he said when he dropped. Because he was sitting there. You saw the yeah. look on his face. His jaw started clenching up. He had his eyes down. You know what he's thinking. And you know what he said? Story of my life. That's exactly what I was going to say. This yeah. is what I've dealt, dealt with my entire life. He said, every day I play in the league, I'm going to treat it like this is my last game. This is an opportunity. And, and that, that, to me, is the kind of guy you want from a culture standpoint, a guy that's a worker, grinder, never takes anything for granted. That's who Dalton Connect's going to be. Tim, what do you make of the Spurs' decision to add their draft capital in the 2030s, which is a while from now, rather than trying to add top in talent right now? 2031 pick. I don't know what I'm having for dinner. Right. Okay, we got a 2031 <laughs> pick That's that we're trying to translate to. Look, I, look, I don't know exactly what the Spurs were thinking here. Um, you had a four and eight. Obviously, they didn't love the draft enough to just take the pick. That's obvious, right? They got their guard with the four picks to Farn Castle. Mm -hmm. I really like that pick a lot. He's got better size than Dillingham. He can defend. He might be an all-league caliber defender eventually. Uh, can turn it to a nice league guard. Obviously, has to work on his shooting. So they answered a need with the first pick at, at the number four spot. Now you come down to eight, and I guess they just didn't love anybody on this board enough. I love what Minnesota did. How many teams could have the year that they had a year ago not have a pick at the top of the draft and get a player that I think is going to have an impact on that team this year. Yeah. Despite the fact that they were one of the surprise stories in the league and the way they ran through Denver and everything else, I think there are minutes to be had for Dillingham right now because mm -hmm. he can score at the NBA level right now. He's a little undersized, but he's got great handle, acceleration, and he can flat out put the ball in the basket. So I love this from Minnesota standpoint. To totally agree. I think it's a win-win. I do think he'll play next year in Minnesota. I think you mentioned Mike Conley before. I think, you know, as, as he gets older, they're just going to need someone to shoulder some of the load for him, particularly in the regular season. And Minnesota just does not have avenues left, really, to add talent like this. They're capped out. They're taxed right. out. They've traded all their picks for Gobert, except the ones they traded last night. And, Legs, I'll tell you what the Spurs are thinking. The Spurs are loading up on draft assets for when Victor Wembanyama is going to be in his prime. They have a 2030 pick swap from Dallas. They have a 2030 pick swap from Minnesota, 2031 pick from Minnesota, a 2028 pick swap with Boston. And what they're doing is saying, hey, in those years, we're going to be awesome. We're going to be picking 28, 27, 30 because we got the best player in the world at that time. You guys, one of you guys might be bad, and we can flip and get a big asset at the top of the draft or near the top of the draft when Wemby is in his prime. And what they're also telling you is we're not in a rush. We've studied NBA history. When you get these generational prospects like this, and it happened with LeBron in Cleveland, and it happened with Anthony Davis in New Orleans, and you rush, 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 we got to win right now. When you get veterans all around them, that model can burn out real fast. We're going to take it a little bit more slowly. Now, also, we think this dude is so damn good, Wemby, that we're going to win 40 games next year regardless of what they do. But, but here's the thing, and, and Legs and I talked about this this morning off camera. It's another side of history, too, I hope the, the Spurs are studying. And it's the guys that are 7'3 and taller. When you go back and look at those guys, they, their careers, they, it, hadn't been, it hadn't been that long. Like, it wasn't long careers. So, when you have a guy like Victor Wimbayamba and the season that he had as a rookie, leading the league in block shots, like, one could argue he should have been defensive player of the year. When you look at the drop-off from when he was on the floor to when he wasn't on the floor with a uh, Spurs rank offensively. We know he has the complete package, and he has show, he's showing us right now, and he's showing the Spurs that he wants to win now. 
right? He has an old soul. We don't, we don't, we ain't, we're not hearing about Victor going back, back home to France. Like, he's staying in San Antonio. He's putting on muscle. He's working out with Jamal Crawford. Like, he's in the lab. So when you have a guy like that that could possibly, in the next year or two, be the best player on the floor on both sides of the floor, damn it, you need to make it happen. I don't think the Spurs are done. To be honest well, with they, you, I don't think they're done. They opened up cap space by getting out of that number eight pick. They have a little bit more cap space. I agree with you. I think they're going to get somebody somebody else to thread the needle of like, we're going to get a little better now, but we're not going to throw all our chips on the mm -hmm. table. What did Jay Billis say last night? I think we're underestimating the Spurs' ability to uh, scout 11 and 12-year-olds. Yeah, <laughs> <right. laughs>